Ah, Poison. The glammiest of all glam bands. When you think of hair metal bands, you think of Poison. Now, are they a good band? Well, I mean, you know, they're fun. Poison is about to take part in the Stadium Tour, along with Motley Crue, Def Leppard, and Joan Jett. In this tour, I must admit, I'm pretty excited to see. Even though I've seen three of the four bands before, it's a great package. Funnily enough, I've seen Poison twice. Once in 2011, opening for Motley Crue, and the next year, again, opening for, guess who, Def Leppard. If I'm not mistaken, Def Leppard has toured with Poison a few times. And these are the kind of shows Poison plays now, 80s package tours, because I guess they can't really support a full arena tour by themselves. And the reason is, in 2022, although their discography and their hits still stand, they become so fucking irrelevant. They are the ultimate nostalgia act. They have not brought anything new to their audience in years. When I saw Poison Live, they played the exact same set list both times. That's not an exaggeration. I've checked it on setlist.fm. They played the same songs in the exact same order. Even CC DeVille's guitar solo was the same. He did a medley of Raining Blood and Eruption. Brett Michaels popped out of the back of the stage the same way both times at the start of the show. The backdrop was the same. It was the exact same show. If it weren't for the fact that I was really at both concerts to see the headlining act, it would have really fucking pissed me off. But when I saw them the second time, it was just kind of funny. And the thing is, there's a lot of crossover with Motley Crue and Def Leppard's fan base, hence their co-headlining tour. So what did Poison think? No one would come to both shows a year apart, or if they did, they wouldn't notice, or they just don't fucking care. Now, why do I think they should have put more thought into it? Because now, Poison is solely a touring band. They have not released an album of original material since 2002. That's 20 years now. 20 fucking years since a new album. They did release a covers album called Poison in 2007, but no original material. And what's more offensive than that is the fact that on their covers album, a number of the songs had already been released. It's not even original in its unoriginality. Your Mama Don't Dance was featured on their second album, Open Up and Say Ah. Rock and Roll Night was released as a single in 1987. Squeezebox was on their album Holly Weird, which I'll talk about in a second. Where an American Band was on a Greatest Hits collection released the previous year. And Don't Mess Around with Jim was a bonus track on the re-release of their first album, Look What the Cat Dragged In. So, 5 out of the 13 tracks are old recordings. Or, 5 out of the 14 tracks if you bought the Walmart Exclusive Edition, which featured a cover of Justin Timberlake's Sexy Pack. I wish that was a joke, but it is not. I mean, how lazy can you be? I'm already not a huge fan of cover albums. Hearing rock bands cover other rock songs most of the time doesn't impress or interest me. I mean, when Miley Crew covered Madonna's Like a Virgin for the Dirt soundtrack, it got a lot of flack from the fans. But to be honest, those are the covers I kind of like to hear. Weird genre-crossing choices. Poison and Sexy Back doesn't qualify because the rendition is horrendous. But anyway, my point is, the Poison album is just covers, and not completely new ones either. It's a completely soulless release. So as I was saying, their last release of original material was in 2002, Hollyweird. And no joke, it's one of the worst albums I've ever heard in my entire fucking life. The production, the songs, it all sounds so bad. Two years earlier, in 2000, they released a live album called Power to the People, which included some new tracks, and those too were embarrassingly bad. For example, the song Power to the People, it doesn't resemble the Poison sound at all, it's very clearly an attempt to sound relevant, and it just plain sucks ass. So what has Poison been doing since then? Well, they do keep releasing albums. Greatest hits albums, that is. I've never seen a fucking band that has this many greatest hits releases. They have seven studio albums and eight greatest hits, not to mention five live albums. This is inexcusable. You should absolutely not have more greatest hits than studio albums. How many times can you try to sell the same material to the same people in a newer package? It's embarrassing and insulting to the fan base. And their last Best of Collection came out in 2014, so you know, they're probably due for a new one soon. The funny thing is, when they play live, they stick exclusively to the first three albums. Their fourth and fifth albums do not feature original guitarist C.C. DeVille, so those songs are out of the question when it comes to playing live. They will throw in a cover from Poisoned, but Hollywood is never represented, and deservedly so. Over the years, the different members of Poison have expressed interest in releasing new material. Brett Michaels, who I'm pretty sure at this point calls all the shots in the band, has even said that he hoped to release some new Poison songs. 
but he's full of shit. The guy cares more about touring with his solo band and appearing on reality TV than Poison. He was just featured on The Masked Singer, where he embarrassingly paraded around on stage in a banana suit. I'm sorry, but that is not rock and roll. If you went back in time and told Brett Michaels in 1988 that one day he'd be on national TV dancing around in a banana costume singing other people's songs, he'd probably fucking faint. But the question is, what is stopping Poison from recording new music? And I think part of the reason is, they were never really great at writing songs to begin with. That's not a joke about the old material being bad, but it's a little known fact that a few of their biggest hits were written by other people. Before joining Poison, guitarist C.C. DeVille had auditioned for a band called Kid Rocker. No, not Kid Rock. Kid Rocker. Kid Rocker lent DeVille the master tapes for their songs while he was auditioning for the band, and when they dissolved not long after, DeVille took some of those songs and used them in Poison. Talk Dirty to Me, I Won't Forget You, Fallen Angel, and Ride the Wind were all written by Kid Rocker. Members of Kid Rocker did sue Poison for plagiarism in 2011, but in 2013, a California federal judge ruled in Poison's favor, basically declaring that they had waited too long before suing the band. So, Kid Rocker, you fucked up. And the thing is, does it even really matter at this point? Because Kid Rocker doesn't exist, and hasn't since the mid-80s, and Poison does. So, whatever. And bringing this all up, I'm not trying to discredit Poison completely. My point is, they had a leg up from the very beginning. All the songs I named that Kid Rocker had wrote were released as singles by Poison, so they started their career kind of cheating. They did write great songs besides those, but there's a sour taste in your mouth when you realize, for example, Talk Dirty to Me was stolen from another band by CeCe DeVille. So what I'd ask of the band? Legitimize yourself. Don't even put out a full album. Do an EP, a few singles even. There's no reason after 20 years you can't write new material. You're still a band that makes music, and although that band has turned into more of a business, there's no reason why you still can't make an effort for the fans who've stuck with you for all these years while you go out on tour playing stale set lists. I'm going to see the stadium tour this summer, so I will be seeing Poison again. And I'm sure as I sit out in the warm summer sun, sipping a cold beer, it'll be nothing but a good time. Heck, they may even throw in a few surprises into their set. But for all your other fans that are still supporting you, you owe them a little more. Catch Poison this summer in a city near you on the stadium tour with Motley Crue, Def Leppard, and Joan Jett.